The attack we're going to demonstrate today is a man-in-the-middle attack on HTTP traffic with reverse proxies. Essentially what an attacker does in this attack is trick a user into visiting a website that's controlled by an attacker that the user believes is the legitimate website that they are intending to visit. In this attack, the attacker's website essentially acts as a malicious exchanger of data between the user and a legitimate website. The advantage of this attack over others, such as cloned websites, is that this allows attackers the ability to not only sniff traffic, but also modify traffic on the fly. So in this attack, essentially at a high level, uh, the victim user believes that they are talking to targetdomain.com, but perhaps through phishing or typo squatting or any other kind of attack, maybe, maybe local network attacks, we can get the victim user to actually visit attackerdomain.com which is a reverse proxy controlled by the attacker. And what's going on here is the victim user will make a request to attackerdomain.com and this reverse proxy will use uh, Python script or any other scripting language essentially to modify the requests, uh, maybe change out the host headers, uh, maybe post or get data as needed and forward that on to targetdomain.com so that targetdomain.com believes that the user they are talking to is actually the reverse proxy and is completely unaware of this user over here. And then when target domain has a response, they will forward that response back to the attacker domain.com, the reverse proxy, and using the same scripts, it will modify this, uh, maybe changing out HTML hyperlinks, um, cookie, cookie domain scopes and whatnot, and set them to attacker domain.com so that when we forward them back to the victim user, the victim user believes that the legitimate site that they're visiting is attackerdomain.com and they're completely unaware of targetdomain.com. The advantage of using reverse proxies in this attack is that from the time the victim user visits the attacker's website, the entire attack is seamless and automated. So if a target user has two-factor authentication like with Authy or an RSA token, then we don't have to try to fish the user for their token and then use it in real time. Uh, if we can't capture it in real time, then we must convince the user to give it up again, which might be difficult. Uh, so this is extremely helpful when the attacker cannot reasonably predict when the, a user might land on the attacker's website. If the attacker wanted to, they could launch the attack and forget about it for a few hours while the reverse proxy automates the theft of information that sits behind the authenticated session. So to demonstrate this, we're going to target LastPass. Uh, where we pretend to be a victim user with two-factor authentication enabled. Uh, as you might be aware, LastPass is a cloud-based password manager, and we picked this because it's an interesting target, and it's an interesting target because if a LastPass user was compromised, then all the credentials in their vault will be compromised as well. And you can imagine that anyone with hundreds, uh, potentially even thousands of credentials stored at LastPass uh, would be devastated if an attacker manages to compromise their LastPass account. To perform this attack, we first need to register a domain. In this case, the domain we're going to be using is lastpass.secure-site.dev, and we're going to point that domain to a server running a tool called Man in the Middle Proxy. Uh, so Man in the Middle Proxy is an HTTP proxy tool that allows interactive traffic examination and modification of that traffic. And we can set it to reverse proxy mode, which will proxy the traffic between users and the lastpass.com site and allow us to sniff and modify it with a Python script. So on the right side of the screen here, we see a Tmux terminal that is split into two. Uh, on the top half is the command that we're going to be running. Uh, we're going to be using man in the middle dump, which is part of the man in the middle proxy suite uh, with some command line options here. Uh, here is the Python script we're going to be running. Uh, we set the mode to reverse proxy mode. I'm pointing it to lastpass.com. We're going to run our server on port 443 and we're going to give it a TLS certificate that was generated and signed by Let's Encrypt. And so when we run it here, you can see it's listening at 443. And then as we visit the uh, reverse proxy site, uh, we're going to see all the traffic in real time flowing here between the user and lastpass.com. Uh, also in real time here at the bottom is we're going to be seeing the output of the target victim user's credentials when they authenticate uh, to what they think is lastpass.com but really are a proxy. And this Python script up here is going to be injecting JavaScript code that handles that for us. And so to show this ploy and to demonstrate it, uh, we have here a, a phishing email that we created 
informing a target victim user that their master password was changed. And so in a panic, the user might click the link to revert the changes. And as you can see here, uh, we have some traffic flowing already. And we have the login prompt here, and it looks exactly like the lastpass.com site. Now, as the victim user, we authenticate to the malicious reverse proxy using their lastpass.com credentials, which I already entered here. We click login, and this user has two-factor authentication enabled, as you can see, so we enter the code here. Uh, right after we submit the code, the user's browser will obtain their encrypted LastPass database and decrypt it within the browser. Because the user is on the malicious reverse proxy, we will inject JavaScript code to decrypt this database within the user's browser and send us the credentials in real time. This will all happen before the password vault even appears on the user's browser, and we'll see all the credentials fill up here. So let me enter two-factor authentication code, then authenticate. And as you can see here, all the credentials fill up here. Um, and that was before the password database, the vault actually even appeared here. And just to show that we got some of these credentials here for Google, for example, we see their username, Johnny Secure, Johnny Secure, and the URL matches here. And the password matches as well. And remember, we're still on the malicious domain running the reverse proxy lastpass.secure-site.dev. Now, there is one caveat to this attack on LastPass users I must mention, and that is new login verification. Every time a user authenticates from a new device or location, LastPass will send an email to ask the user to confirm their new login. Uh, this is by default, but it can be disabled uh, by the user. For simplicity's sake, we already went through that process, and there are techniques to deal with it. But for this demonstration, it's out of scope, so showing that would distract from the main topic. Uh, with that said, let's wrap this up by saying that this attack is not limited to just LastPass. Uh, you can let your imagination go wild on the possibilities here. For example, an attacker can place a malicious reverse proxy in front of a single sign-on solution, or place one in front of a cloud storage provider like Box, OneDrive, or Dropbox. Or maybe register a common misspelling, like a typo squatting domain, on a major bank's domain and place a malicious reverse proxy in front of the bank's website. An attacker can then replace wiring instructions or ACH transfer information with those controlled by an uh, overseas attacker for any user that lands on the wrong domain. Uh, the possibilities for this attack are endless. Anyway, that's it, and I thank you for watching.